everyone, you're watching a brand new episode of Melt. I'm Ritvika Gupta and this week we'll be taking a look at the revival of an iconic motorcycle brand. Yes, I'm talking about Java Motorcycles that's made a comeback in India after 20 years. Anand Rangaswamy, editor of Melt, is here with me today. Hi Anand. Hello. Anand, uh, Java Motorcycles had a cult following back in the 60s and 70s. So tell us what are your memories attached to the brand and what makes it so iconic? I'm not sure it was a cult following. It was one of few bikes available. As much as saying the ambassador had a cult following. Okay. But uh, having said that, it was the number one bike in the country. It was a bike every man wanted. It was a bike every woman wanted her husband or boyfriend to own. It was a bike that you took long rides on. So you did Madras to Pondicherry, Bombay to Goa, uh, Delhi to Kasoli. You know, these are the kind of rides you did. And, Obviously, there are fantastic memories attached to the drives in general and then you link it back to the vehicle you drove on or in. So in this case, there are fantastic memories about the Java. And the brand has made a comeback after 20 years. So why don't you tell us your thoughts about it? No, I, I think there are incredible uh, challenges. It's not the simplest of mm -hmm. things to bring back an old brand. But uh, there is little doubt that uh, a brand which is authentic and which evokes nostalgia and is honest has a damn good chance of succeeding. And uh, you combine that with this unique partnership which is bringing the brand back. So you've got, uh, you know, uh, Anand Mahindra from the Mahindra group and uh, he's got the heritage of the entire Mahindra group and, you know, people know his passion for driving and two-wheelers thanks to Mahindra Auto. Also has his scooter brand. Then you've got Bama Nirani who comes from the family which owned the Java when it and still owns the Java brand. And you have uh, Anupam Tareja who was instrumental in bringing the Royal Enfield brand back. So you've got an incredible combination of uh, three people who, who love and uh, cherish the Java brand and they're putting their money where their mouth is and trying to bring it back as a business. But to what extent do you think cashing in on the feelings of affinity and nostalgia is going to work for the brand? So what does the brand have to do differently according to you? You know, interestingly I asked uh, Anupam this question and he said it's incredible that today because of Google, you know, uh, a young kid can, when I say young kid, 25 years old, can go to Google and say tell me the Java story or what is Java about and can figure out authenticity in milliseconds. So authentic, which one would have thought was uh, only in the minds of, of mm. the older generation, which would perhaps not buy the Java, is available to the new generation as well. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, all their bookings are online. And uh, Anupam was telling me that almost every single booking they've got mm. has been done on a mobile phone. So that's an incredible story. So uh, the early signs are fantastic. Let's see. Well, before we proceed further, let's take a look at what Anand Mahindra had to say at the launch of Java Motorcycles. I knew of Java, of course, I'm that vintage. And I remember then coming back on a plane once. We were flying <clears throat> back from Delhi. Pavan Goenka, my colleague, was with me. We were coming back from some auto show. And we gave John Abraham a ride, the actor. And I knew John was a biker. So John was sitting next to me and I said, John, um, I'm thinking of looking at Java. Java, yes, the, what, do you, what, do you, what do you know about that brand? So John, at his theatrical best, paused and he said, it's like this. See, Enfield is like your skin. Java, it's in your blood, yaar. It's in your blood. <laughs> So Anand, you had a chat with Baman Irani and Anupam Tareja, the past and future of Java Motorcycles. No, Baman is also the future. <laughs> what kind of a sense did you get from their conversation, you know, and how similar or different were their perspectives when it came to the brand? Oh, uh, there were huge differences. I think Baman had this huge emotional attachment to Java. I mean, it's belonged in the family and uh, he holds on to that fam family heirloom almost. While Anupam, uh, despite his obvious love for the brand, uh, is a little hard-nosed. He is a businessman. He is bothered about top line, bottom line. And he talks like a businessman. So I'd say one is an emotional conversation, one is a hard-nosed business conversation. All right. So I think it's going to be an interesting chat. Uh, let's get ready to melt with Bama Nirani. Have a look. 
Uh, so, Bhaman, tell me, why did you get into the business of launching a motorcycle? Yeah, Nandi, you know me, for, know me for some time, right? I don't look like the kind that would get into a motorcycle business. But let me tell you, I was born into the family right. that, that built uh, Java and then YSD motorcycles in India. Uh, Rustam Irani, my father, was the first one to import these motorcycles into the country. So, uh, first time around, you know, I, I keep telling people that I could almost ride before I could uh, learn to run. And it used to be so, I used to ride a lot. Uh, the factory shut down in 96, uh, you know, at that point of time, I was all of 24, 25, 26 years old. And uh, I always had it in the back of my head that, you know, we should restart this brand. This brand was such, an, such a loving brand, you know, in the hearts of the people. India was literally, according to me, built on, on two wheels, and those two wheels which were, it were built on was in a, in a large way the Java motorcycles itself. So somewhere deep down there was this thought, you know, that one fine day, uh, we'll find the right partners and we'll build, uh, we'll build the Java motorcycle again. So, uh, Baman, you brought up the fact that uh, we and, you and I know each other for some time. Now, you're a hard nosed businessman. <laughs> yeah, now, tell me the business side of this decision. One is the emotion uh, side, you know, family and great old brand and so on. But finally, it's about money. So, and you know, I have built a business, right? right. I, I built a business from scratch. Real estate was not my family business at all. Rustamji as a brand was also built from scratch. Of course, we had the goodwill of having, you know, a, a Bawa, Bawa name and that was, you know, very reliable and trustable. But we built it block by block. So I understand what it takes to be a brand, right? right? You imagine a brand like Java. I mean, you talk to people. I mean, I'm sure if you have friends who, who have been riders or are riders right now, you just talk to them about Java. And there's immediately a melody in their voice, especially if they've ever ridden it, right? right. They go into a kind of a rapture. Please believe me, these brands evoke uh, a, a sense of uh, ownership, a sense of wanting to ride. And all this comes out of following your own passion. I believe uh, two-wheelers are a passion amongst those who love to ride, amongst those who just enjoy the wind in their face, amongst those who like to, you know, go from place. It's about the journey. It's never about the destination on two wheels. You're actually enjoying the journey. And towards that, I can, I can see this uh, is going to be a fantastic ride. And now I'll provoke you, saying Java means a lot to those who are perhaps over 45. Means little to those who are 20, 25, which would be the core audience for any bike. So how, how do you respond to that? Let me tell you, uh, this is exactly what uh, we debated, right? That obviously people who are 40 and above would remember the brand. What about those who are below? But today's young adult educates himself or knows more about stuff because he's got Google on his side, right? He's reading up everything about a brand. What he wants is the authenticity. What he wants is the, uh, the, the real uh, thing. He does not want fakes, right? So uh, Anupam will tell you more. So Anupam, tell me why do you think this is the right, right time for Java? To answer your question, I think there has always been a right time for Java. It was yesterday, it is today, it will be tomorrow. So let me paraphrase your question. You are saying there is a legend that was there. Uh, it went away. Uh, should it come back or when should it come back? My answer to that is legends don't go away. Maybe they go for a walk. Right. Uh, maybe they go back of your mind for a bit because of an event. Uh, but if they were a legend, then by definition they can't die. I'm giving you a product which is let's meet and plan. It'll give you such a joy that you and me will say let's go for a breakfast. And then we will decide what to do. Whether we'll chat, whether we'll go for a movie from there, whether we'll come back home. So there is a, sometime a product defines your behavior. Java is that motorcycle that will define that behavior. How do you sell nostalgia to a 25 year old today? Because <clears throat> he doesn't have a memory which is 30 years old or 40 years old. The past is inaccessible and freely interpretable. For a marketeer to interpret it to make you feel good today is the task. Right. And I think it's easy to achieve with these beautiful designs. Second, I think these millennials want to belong. Uh, they seek authenticity. But how do they seek authenticity? Uh, Google it. So now, uh, if I came back and met you a year from now in the same office, uh, what is the story you would like to tell me in a headline? So first, there are going to be another brand. There's going to be another brand. I think you're aware of that, uh, BSA, which is our international strategy, while Java is the Indian strategy. So right now, if you ask me, the response has been phenomenal. It's way better uh, than what I expected. And let me give you a data point. 80% of my buyers are between the age of 23 and 29. If I can have user-created content become viral, I think I've won my game. 
So when we talk, instead of asking me these questions, you will say, oh, I heard these guys did on this bike, these guys did that on that bike. I believe the clubs have sprouted up. I believe there is a there are people who are meeting. These young guys are finding a common cause. Oh, did you hear that story when these guys did that? Did you hear? That is where I would have won. All right, so that was the conversation and here's presenting the Mel Cheat Sheet. That's a wrap on this episode of Melt. Uh, I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Don't forget to catch all our content on our social media platforms. Next week, we'll be bringing you an exclusive conversation with Sir Martin Sorel. The general tenor uh, in the industry is, is the pressure um, on the industry. So I think 2019, we'll see a lot of movement of people.